Welcome to Pareto TV, Nils. Thank you so much. For the benefit of the audience, could you give us a brief background on who you are and who waste plastic upcycling is? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, my name is Nils Stilund, and I'm chairman of the board in uh, waste plastic upcycling, also called WPU. Um, and I have a background uh, actually from the graphic arts industry. So um, I have been uh, running my own uh, companies in Scandinavia for 25 years until I sold uh, the companies back in 2008. And since then, I have um, I have helped different companies uh, with uh, different jobs uh, since then. And then um, one day, a big uh, accountant company in Denmark uh, presented me to this uh, project, uh, waste plastic project. Um, this project was uh, that they ran out of money and uh, they had an idea. And uh, I thought the idea was uh, very, very interesting. So uh, myself and two other investors, we brought some money on the table. And then uh, we decided to uh, to start up the project uh, from there. And it's about uh, two and a half year ago. And uh, today here we are uh, with a full working system where we can uh, upcycle wasted plastic uh, into an oil product, actually a full range NAFTA oil product uh, that can be used for, for different things. Like uh, some of it can go back to produce new plastic and the rest can be used uh, as an additive to uh, to diesel and petrol uh, and also for for uh, uh, jet fuel uh, so that's uh, very interesting uh, we we feel that uh, that there is a, a a big market uh, for this and um, yeah we are now building three factories in Denmark uh, and what is special about your project compared to other recycling projects in Denmark and elsewhere yeah, um, there are so many good uh, recycling uh, projects uh, all over the place we can see and uh, we find it very, very good and interesting that uh, all this recycling is uh, being done as much as possible. But um, um, plastic can only be recycled a limited number of times, around five times. Uh, then the building blocks in the plastic is uh, so damaged that you cannot use it for plastic anymore. Um, and actually, it's only a minority of the, of the wasted plastic that are being mechanically uh, reused today. Um, so for the rest, uh, when it when the plastic comes to this end of life, when you cannot reuse it anymore, then you can only put it on landfill or you can put it to incineration. Uh, or now we can put it in our pyrolysis uh, system. Uh, and that's a, that, that's, a, that's a situation today. So many of the recycling uh, projects are very good, but they cannot take the plastic when it comes to the end of life uh, like, like we can. And um, we, you can say we're the only solution uh, or pyrolysis are the only solution to this uh, landfill or incineration uh, that we're doing today. And the incinera of course, the landfill is with a big impact to the environment. And the uh, incineration is with a huge CO2 uh, emission uh, up in the air. And that's uh, also not uh, very popular today. Yeah. So uh, our system uh, yeah, can, uh, can, uh, can come in there and, uh, and uh, substitute the incineration. Interesting. And I know there's generally two types of uh, this pyrolysis uh, reactors. Could you explain what the difference is between a continuous feed reactor and a batch reactor? Yes, um, from the beginning we decided to go with the batch uh, solution and we did that in close cooperation with the Technology University of Denmark. Uh, so we have developed the system in close cooperation with them based on the basis uh, uh, pyrolysis uh, technology. but. We decided that the batch system was uh, the right one for us because it is very robust and it's very flexible. You can say that the, um, a continuously fed system, it needs uh, the plastic uh, clean, sorted and shredded out in small pieces. And that's not the way wasted plastic uh, are looking. So we decided to go with the batch, which is uh, more or less like a big uh, washing machine 
we open the hatch, we put in the plastic, we close the hatch, and we push the bottom for a program that are uh, that are being used for that specific type of plastic we are running. So like uh, in your washing machine, you have a program for light clothes and one for colored clothes and so on. And, um, and we have different programs for different kinds of plastic. So we can take the plastic in big ballots, 500 kilos with the uh, steel bands and everything around it. Um, it can be dirty, it can be wet. Uh, we can take it all as it is and that's that's only the batch uh, solution that can do that. So we found it was very uh, flexible and it's also very uh, robust. And uh, and because our reactor can take 10 tons of plastic, uh, we decided that instead of uh, uh, going up uh, with bigger uh, uh, reactors, we would like to build more units of the one we already have built it that we know are working. So we have a lot of flexibility in the first factory in Fort Weile in Denmark, which are ready uh, in a month or two to, uh, to have the equipment installed. Um, then we will have six reactor lines. So it gives us a lot of flexibility to run some, uh, we've been running some hospi uh, from hospitals, some plastic, waste plastic from hospitals. And we can do that in, for example, in reactor one and two, and then we can run some uh, household plastic in three and four and so on. So we have a lot of flexibility with this uh, batch system um, in com compared to the continuously fed systems who, who need a lot of treatment to the plastic before they can use it. We can take it all as it is and all kinds of plastic. Yeah, and you mentioned the Forveille factory. Uh, you you were listed on your next Oslo a couple of months ago to raise capital for this factory. Could you elaborate on how the uh, construction is progressing? Yes. Um, yeah, you're right. We we got the money in the, in the market, and this uh, factory is uh, fully funded, and it's uh, almost uh, finished with the construction of the factory. Uh, we are building with a famous Danish company called KT Erhvervsbyg, and um, they uh, they have almost finished the construction. So we will start uh, bringing the equipment in and uh, install that, and we expect to run the first uh, test runs here in December and then they ramp up during the uh, first quarter of next year to a full production on all six lines. And um, everything is uh, uh, moving on according to the schedule and the budget, which we are actually very happy about because uh, as the world is looking right now, we know with the availability of uh, different products, um, yeah, we have been lucky that we were out uh, very, very quick from the beginning to lock uh, agreements with our suppliers and uh, so far, everything is running uh, according to the plan and to the budget uh, we had. So, yeah, that's uh, we are very, very happy about that. Yeah, so you haven't seen any disruptions or cost overruns in the project? No, no, not at all. So uh, we're actually a little ahead of schedule on the construction side, but uh, because the equipment will come uh, in according to the plan, uh, we 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 possibly cannot use that uh, for anything but uh, at the end of the day we can see we are we are running so that we uh, should be up and, up and run in production uh, in uh, in time yeah and you you have large expansion plans have you have you been able to hire any new employees since be, uh, being listed yes we uh, we decided to uh, to hire a, a new uh, or a technical manager um, and he started uh, two or three months ago and uh, he is coming uh, from a job in uh, FL Smith and he has been uh, building uh, big factories all over the world so it's a really good capacity for us uh, because we will start constructing the next factory in Naxco uh, very soon so uh, we need some more people and we have also recently hired uh, our our financial manager so it is also in place and uh, we have started the recruitment of the uh, of the workers uh, to run the four Weile factory so that's uh, also uh, uh, moving on as scheduled very good and we all know that there are large movements in the feedstock market for plastic how have you secured the feedstock for four Weile? Yeah, the, the situation is that the um, VPU, we have got a, a certification, the ISCC plus certification from the EU, which uh, uh, means that the, all the, the plastic we are taking is end of life plastic. So uh, all the recycling uh, uh, companies, they have been using it first. And then when it comes to end of life, we take it here with this uh, certification. 
And um, because we are only taking end-of-life plastic, there's not such a big competition uh, uh, to this. And also because we can take the plastic uh, with everything included, as I mentioned, the steel bands around it, uh, we have been running plastic from uh, some hospitals with the uh, needles and ostomy bags and everything included, and uh, we can run it all. And after the uh, the batch is over, we can clean the reactor for the steel and all that, and then uh, run the next one. So we, when we talk to our suppliers of the plastic, we are not only asking for the rations in the bread, we can take the whole bread, including everything. And that means that uh, our suppliers, they are very happy to supply us with the plastic because we are not only asking for the best quality, we, we can take it all. So we have actually secured not only for Weile, but all three factories in Denmark, we have secured the, uh, the feedstock for the next two to three years. Sounds very robust. And, and how have yes. you secured the offtake for the oil that you will be producing? Yes, we um, from already from the beginning, uh, before we uh, we made our IPO, we uh, made an agreement with the the world's uh, largest uh, independent oil trader called Vitol, and uh, Vitol they are all over the world, and um, we made an agreement with them. They have invested in our company, and we also made an agreement that they uh, they we made a contract that they have uh, bought all the oil we can produce on all three factories three years uh, out in the future from the day when all three factories are up and running. So that means actually five years from now. So Bitzel, they are buying all the oil and uh, they are buying it at a price we have agreed up front uh, with a mechanism that makes it uh, very interesting for us here where when the oil prices are going up. And we have a bottom, uh, bottom price, which is uh, the one we have in our budget. So we cannot come below that. We can only have an, an add-on uh, to the price uh, as uh, as the market is uh, reacting right now. So it's uh, very interesting for us that uh, we have secured the feedstock and we have also secured the out the, the offtake. So uh, we only have to process uh, the products and, and that's it. Yeah, and, and we all know that the oil price is increasing and electricity price is increasing and there's uh, quite a high inflation. H how is this all impacting your business case? Yeah, it's actually uh, impacting it in a positive way because, uh, as you say, the oil prices are going up, so uh, we have a higher higher income. And uh, at the same time, our system, uh, our batch system, is very special in in the way that we are not we are not uh, uh, using any external energy to run the system. The system is actually running on wasted plastic because when the process is starting, a gas will be released. Uh, from the from the plastic, and we are using that gas to run our burners in the system. So uh, we are actually running the whole process and the whole system on on wasted plastic. Uh, if we have a, 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 if we start up with a cold reactor, we have a little bit of oil from uh, uh, the production the day before of our, of our own uh, oil, and we start up with that. And then when the gas is coming in the process, we switch over and run it uh, only on the gas. So we are not using uh, nature gas or anything else, uh, oil or anything from the outside. Only the only thing we need electricity for is for our pumps and for the uh, coffee machine in the kitchen. Very good. And, and so, so by so so by that you can say we are very independent uh, on on how it goes with the uh, with the supply chain on on that. Yes, uh, and finally, Nils, do you have any plan for further expansion? beyond the currently three factories? <clears throat> yes, uh, we are right now in talks with, I must say, many, many people from all over the world because uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the benefits for us is that we have been running production for six months or, or more with our test system. So we have been running, we have sold the oil uh, we have produced for during half a year to a big German uh, customer. And uh, so we have showed that everything is working. And because of that, we have a long list of people who are interested in uh, sourcing uh, our technology for factories uh, all over the world. And we are carefully uh, looking into that at the moment uh, in, uh, and, and building up a model how to do that uh, all over the world. Also because you can say only as the four Weile factory, um, we are saving uh, 40,000 tons of CO2 
compared to the incineration that you uh, that you go with the, for the plastic right now. So it's a huge saving, and and there are so many places all over the world where they can see that this uh, CO2 saving is uh, very very important uh, and has a high value. Um, so um, so yeah, we uh, we have a plan for a big expansion all over the world. Very good. We look forward to following Waste Plastic Upcycling in the years to come, uh, and we look forward to welcoming you at the Energy Conference at the 14th and 15th of uh, September. Yeah, thank you so much. We will be there. See you then.